Welcome to Project Pack number 21. This is day two. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria, and we are having the best time doing these uh, beautiful botanicals, right? And uh, these are some of the tools we're going to use, basically all of the ones that are in the pack, just laying them out here to, for show and tell. And one of our lovely pages. And Maria, I'm going to show you my discovery uh -oh. <laughs> of something that is... You might not be surprised, but it's related to paradox. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's see where this uh, exploration takes us. Okay. I'm going to start out with my Micron 01. And I'm creating a, like a matrix for these paradox, uh, or this paradox element, which is actually the uh, part of the blossom of this flower. Okay. All right. So the bottom, as it turns out, of this are, are all straight lines. But what we noticed uh, when I found this one, very rare, is that the top, there's a slight curve on it. And part of the whole exploration of this, uh, this theme is looking at uh, tangles that might not be thought of as a botanical nature. Right. But this one is. And you for were very lucky that I did. <laughs> I know, because, uh, you know, I didn't expect to see paradox in, in, in a flower here. Now, for those of you that might be new to paradox, what we do is we go from the corner to the line all the way around and you'll notice that, see there's like a little triangle now that's a little smaller and a little rotated. And the paradox, if you will, is by just continuing to do this over and over and over, you end up with a beautiful curve using all these straight lines. And it's a very elegant curve. It's not just any curve. Right. It's like a, this logarithmic spiral. And, and it's yeah. beautiful. And you may notice that where each stroke ends is the beginning of the next one. So for any of you quilters out there, you could do paradox really easily just on the machine. On the machine. You, you don't have to stop and cut. Right. One continuous line. Right. And I also turn my tile each time. You know, it's you'd think that, oh, I could just, particularly when you get small there, just go around, but two reasons I don't like that is the, the character of my stroke changes, and invariably I uh, lose my place. So see that gentle curve just starting? Mm, look at that. Right? So on this next one, I'm going to mirror that first one, okay? So again, you'll see this uh, slightly smaller triangle forming in the larger one. And take your time, remember to breathe, uh, relaxed grip on the pen. But you'll now notice that those two triangles that set this whole thing up there, they're still there, but you don't see the triangles. Right. Like, isn't that cool? And you don't see that line, the, the X line that you began with. Right. It's sort of uh, enveloped in the, into the pattern. Right. So again, I'm going to mirror those bottom ones. And notice what happens when we're on the curve here. So, you know, it's sort of like a takeoff. So I'm going to just go along there, and as I get towards the end, then I branch off. Because even though this triangle has a curved edge, uh, it'll end up being a little bit more straight, or it will be it straight. Appear to be. Yeah. yeah. I think after the second line, pretty much, we go to a straight line. Sort of a kite shape. Very much. Yeah. 
ooh, that would be a great kite. Right. Right? right. Okay. Paradox tangled kites. So again, you can see those meta patterns forming like these, uh, what would you call it? These palm fronds or... Yeah. So again, I'm going to mirror that. And what we're seeing now is the formation of the, you know, the, the general part of this flower. And it's, you know, it's hard to describe the thrill of first seeing one of these, you know, when you see it and... Uh, well, can, especially this one. This right? one's got it, some, some... It's uh, personal. It's yeah. personal, yeah. Right, so there it is. Isn't that gorgeous? And like Maria said, you don't see that initial cross matrix that's underneath it all. So he's given it a little bit of a border here. As always, Aura is yeah. our friend. Always adding detail. You're, you're always... Uh, some art forms, you know, simplify, simplify. But this, you want to constantly do exactly the opposite. Mm. You want to add things. You want to add patterns and, and frames and um, any anything that you can think of that would bring you joy to draw. Yes. And, and in the moment, because a lot of the things that happen here aren't figured out in advance. So there's this delightful spontaneity. Now you'll notice at the top, so Maria, what's happening here is that at the top, so-called, this is where the stem comes. Ah, neat. So we're going to do a little bit of uh, hollow bawing behind there because this flower has a very, very delicate stem. We, we've not seen any leaves but this beautiful aura just transitions into this stem. And it's and it's hanging. Yeah, like a like a bleeding heart. Right, right, right. So very unimaginatively we or I called this hanging paradox. Mm. So there we go. But nobody else has discovered these as yet that we right, know of. Right. Yet. Right. So walking in the woods, mm -hmm. nobody's seen these out in the in the vast world. Right. Well, I'll, I'll, when we get done, I'll tell everybody exactly where I found it. Okay. Now, sort of in a Hollabaugh esque fashion, not Hollabaugh, um, Hollis fashion, there are these like branchings that take place, and what we think is that there's something to do with the seed form. And this is all a guess because we've never been able to, or I've nev never been able to uh, watch one through its full cycle. Right. And you'll understand that later. But in the inner part of that little curl, there's something that looks like a seed. Oh, there it is. Right? And it has that same Hollabaugh, um, I'm sorry, paradox effect. Now, so oh, you're that doing that tiny, 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 <laughs> tiny little paradox. <laughs> right. So what, what I did is I got, we have a sample now of a larger one. So this is the seed, but it's obviously not to scale. Right. And this is something that a lot of people might not think of, and it was really great to see in this seed, it's a two-sided paradox. Ooh, that's been really one of those things like, right? yeah, we discovered a new uh, two-sided polygon. Right, it's like it was like with Molygon, right? Yeah. And you, you, what we saw in this seed is this same pattern of starting from the corner, taking off and going to the line. Start in the corner, take off and go to the line. Uh, it resembles like an O in, in uh, some of the ancient scripts. Right, right, like with a broad pen. Yeah. 
And you can see that inner part is starting to rotate just a little bit like counterclockwise relative to the outer part. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So I think that supports our idea of it being a seed because it has that same paradox effect, but only with a two-sided. But when it goes into the blossom, you've got... It reproduces. It reproduces using the same uh, paradox structure. So this was quite a milestone of figuring that out. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> so now that we've got the the Micron 01 black down, I'm, I'm going back in and uh, trying to, as best I can from memory, and in the, um, you know, in the context of the environment in which I saw this, tr try to reproduce some of the colors. So the outside part, the, that like uh, aura enveloping, uh, had a greenish tinge. And, and actually, it's amazing that uh, General Pencil, the color of this pencil is exactly the uh, color of that plant. Oh. So that was very fortuitous. Hmm. So what else do we have here? What I noticed is that where the lines come together uh, were reddish. And that's also a lot of the ways we uh, shade paradox, or the way I shade paradox, mm -hmm. is I'll, I'll emphasize where the lines come together. So you're shading with the red. I'm shading with the red, right? So once I have all those where the lines come together, this is a, uh, a fun technique with these pencils because the pencils almost become their own tortillon and they blend really well. So the rest of the paragon, paradox almost all of it, you see how it's blending that yellow gold blends into that red. And it was, it was really, really beautiful. So doing my best to uh, reproduce that here. And there was just this beautiful, beautiful transition. And then it was all held together by that gentle green. This brings back so many memories of uh, you and me collecting specimens in our ninth grade. Wasn't it ninth grade? Yes, Where yes. We had to do a, uh, a wildflower book. We had to actually have specimens that right. we would um, flatten, and then we'd have to say what they were and where the seeds and all that stuff. So this is basically where this comes from, yes. our, our ninth grade yep. uh, exercises. And they must have been doing that everywhere for yeah. a long time because I found my grandfather's oh, no, I'm kidding. Wow. wildflower book with right. all the pressed flowers and yeah. his comments. and I never actually picked up any flowers because I was doing everybody's covers oh. at the time <laughs> and I would tra <laughs> trade them for a flower. <laughs> and, and here's this I other little get thing. An a, though. <laughs> See the little green there in the little last bit of a triangle oh, is a yeah. bit of green. And we see the same thing in the seed. Yeah. So where those lines came together or come together is red. And then it will transition into that gold. And this is why we're pretty, or I'm pretty confident that it's a seed. But I'm usually pretty confident about, about everything. everything. <laughs> so whether <laughs> <laughs> it's one of your good points. <laughs> Whether it actually stays that way or not, but at any moment, I'm pretty confident. <clears throat> and excited. Yes. Actually. Yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah, that little inner bit, just like in the, in the blossom, had a little tinge of green. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. So we, we have that. I'm just shaking off some of the... Uh, extra stuff and you want to you know keep your hand off of the chalk because it will come off it's chalk 
It's yeah. chalk, yeah. So now we get into the... Uh, the story behind The story, it. yeah. You know, putting some of this down because, you know, when you see something, oh, I'll never forget that. But after you've done a few of these flowers, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, is that one here or there? It's really good to put down all of the details. Right. So as we said before, the name is Hanging Paradox. And where we found it or where I found it, and this is, I think, part of the reason that we found it is that it's on the low, undisturbed, moist earth on the north side of oak trees. Okay. Not too specific, right? <laughs> and, we, and we have a lot of oak trees. Okay. So that's the only place I've found it. So that's a bit of an assumption, but the, uh, you know, if somebody finds it elsewhere, we'll, you know, change that. But the bloom is about three inches. And the long, slender, leafless stalk is about one to two feet. Ooh, so it, it shoots right up. Yeah, like, it, sh like, it shoots like right up. in the pulpit or something. So I'm just making a little note there that the seed is obviously not drawn to scale. And the reason it's very rare is it blooms only at night during a new moon okay. in the fall. <laughs> Well, how many of those do you get, right? Not a lot. There's like two or three. Okay. So that's why the colors are, you know, somewhat of a guess. I decided not to shine a light on it. I didn't know if it would, you know, disturb it. But I, there was a sense of the uh, color. Now, the most amazing thing is that if there is a gentle breeze, you will start to hear this bell-like sound. From so, the flower. From the flower. The paradox. The paradox. Is it stuck in the paradox, you think, the bell? There's maybe something is ringing within it or vibrating. Ah. And I think that's why it's on such a large stalk that the slightest bit of air movement ah. makes, it, makes that sound. So you, you have a flower that knows when the new moon's coming out. Right. And who is not sure that and sings that seed, in the right. Yeah, that seed is exactly belonging and, to the flower. And the virtues are strength, beauty, inner knowing, and patience. Oh, well, there you go. And and that was sort of like, you know, you you sit with the flower, and I, I stayed there for quite a few. You were asleep, but I, I stayed there for quite a while and and got that sense of what its virtues are. Was this in the yard? Back in, in back in the woods. Ah. There's a stand of oak trees and that's the only place I found them. So that that was how I sort of, you know, mm. got that idea. So what I'm doing here is since it bloomed only blooms only at night as far as we know, I'm using the blue to sort of like create night. Mm -hmm. And the way I'm doing that is on the outside, putting it down really heavy. And then you'll see I'm just doing it lighter as I go in. And I'm going to go back over this with the tortillon. And I decided to do this after writing because, you know, I didn't want to disturb the, uh, the chalk, at, you know, the least amount of having my hand over it. So now one of those great tortillons come into play. It used to play. be black and now it's blue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we can use that later. Yeah. I think that's maybe the one that Molly picked up in one of the other videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole thing about using the tortillon is I'm just uh, holding it at a low angle, inviting the chalk into the paper, and then, uh, you know, in like gentle light circles, just drawing it into, you know, the center, but lightly. Now, I like these, when Maria d drew these uh, templates, 
I really loved how those like bars along the edge or those supports that hold that oval, mm -hmm. they're just such a wonderful thing to, to play with. So we're, we're playing with the uh, colors of Hanging Paradox and just taking advantage of how the, the chalk pencils can like merge with each other. See that? Interact. Interact, yeah. It just sort of holds the whole thing together. Then mm -hmm. a little bit of graphite. And it's such a light touch, but it, it adds such a dimension, right? I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but every time we add graphite to a tangle, it's like, wow. Now look what I'm doing here. I decided I'm going to use the pencil as the tortillon. So I'm using the, the green pencil as the tortillon to Just mix the graphite in. Smooth that in, yeah. yeah. And just to give a, uh, a sense of over and under, let's go to the, uh, you know, like what you would do in Hollabaugh, mm -hmm. where you would like put some shading around the bar that goes over the under, the one underneath. And I like that technique so much, I'm just going to use that green chalk as the tortillon here. Right? Just a little touch. There's always a, another little bit of adding. Oh, I can add that there. And you may just continue to find things to add and embellish. Just pulling that and softening the edge with the tortillon. That sort of gives a sense of night, right? Mm -hmm. Nice little halo effect around it, too. So you can just imagine it gently, gently making these crystal-like sounds in the wind. So here I'm adding a little bit of graphite around the edge. You know, and if I hadn't, you probably wouldn't have seen it, but it just gives a little bit more contrast and frames it. And then I'll come back in, I think, with, yeah, with the tortillon. And just gentle, circular motions. That'd make a beautiful cameo, right? Yeah. And there we have Hanging Paradox. I thought, oh, let me get my chop on there. And you may or may not put your chop on every page, but I was like, oh, I'm going to put a chop on here. What do you think? It looks great. Looks like I can, I can smell it. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing what you find in your walks and the night behind oak trees. There you go. <laughs> okay, bye for now. Have fun. Bye.